Hello, yo, 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 Shao Style, or Joe the Editor, how the fuck you know me ass, and <laughs> that's probably gonna, how I'm going to start my videos from now on, because I think most people know me through uh, working with Power Kyle, so <laughs> whatever. No, I'm kidding, either way, thanks for uh, checking out this video of mine. Um, so a new feature that Premiere Pro has created is called audio ducking, right, and uh, the cool thing about that is, instead of you going uh, manually to... Uh, reduce the audio and like or increase the audio and like the gaps where like there's no dialogue being uh, spoken pretty much with audio docking it does that for you automatically right which is pretty cool um however i've been having like a few things or a few issues with it and i kind of like discovered a few workarounds i guess works for me at the moment so uh this video is kind of like um showing you how i work with this new feature but at the same time it's uh kind of like a question if i'm doing something wrong or if this if i'm missing something i'll be more than happy for you to like uh just drop off like um, a comment and let me know you know what i'm doing wrong or what what i can do to make my life easier right so i'll definitely appreciate that so we need the windows essential sounds right so you just go to windows you go down here and uh yeah you click on essential sounds right so i already have the window open uh, this is from a previous video, and I just, you know, created these gaps to uh, demonstrate what I'm talking about. Obviously, if you want background music, you want your the volume of your main music to be low, right? Low enough so you can hear the dialogue. But when there's no, like, dialogue, you know, usually it's just common practice to increase the volume uh, just to fill in those dead spaces, right, of no audio or no dialogue being spoken. First of all, you need to, like, tell Premiere Pro what is dialogue and what is music, right? So... What works for me is basically, obviously, all the main dialogue, I just select it all. And over here, you get, like, options. You click on dialogue, then you get this, uh, you know, window that pops up. Because it already knows exactly what this is. It's dialogue. So you get, like, other options on, um, you know, to fix the dialogue, you know. Uh, if you want to, you know, repair, like, the audio, loudness, or whatnot. If you make a mistake, just uh, click on clear audio type, and it goes back to this, you know, window. Asking you, okay, what am I looking at? What, what kind of audio is this? So, since this is dialogue audio, click on dialogue. I made the mistake that I clicked on a few uh, dialogue boxes, you know, but didn't click them all at the same time, and it, I don't know, kind of threw me off, right? Like, if I had a problem where, like, say these guys, right? Yeah, I cleared these guys from the dialogue box. So if I select all these again, this gap right here, already selected as dialogue. These ones last here, I deselected the dialogue option. So if I try to create it, all these in dialogue at the same time, it doesn't do anything. It kind of like uh, just deselects these, which is fine, because in that case, if I... It lets you know which one needs to be converted into dialogue. So I guess that's not bad. So I select these guys, convert them to dialogue, and everything should be fine. All right, so after selecting the dialogue, you want to select the audio and tell it that this is the music. So you go up here and you click on music. Boom, there you go, right? Now, once you tell Premiere, you know, what is a dialogue and what is the audio, as you can see here, you know, you start getting more options of what you're able to do with this um, audio file. First things first, um, I do not like the loudness match, the auto match. I disable that. I just rather, you know, do it myself manually. Usually when there's, um, there's uh, gaps where there's no dialogue, I usually like to have it at negative uh, 15. So I did a right click, go to audio gain. Normalize max peaks. I usually use normalize max peaks to negative 15, right? So when there's uh, there's a gap between the dialogue. Um, obviously, you gotta. So to me, if, you know, negative 15 is you know loud enough, right? It's not like excessively loud, and it's not too low. Now, obviously, uh, we need to like reduce the volume when. Uh, when there's one dialogue appears, right? So there's a thing called ducking, which I think is awesome. You can check on it. And I'm just using the default features right now. So if I hit generate keyframes, it's going to take a while. That's probably one thing I also notice is like uh, it does take not too long, but you know, it does take us time. So as you can see here, it created keyframes between the gaps that increases the volume and like the areas where there's dialogue, the volume gets reduced, right? So let me zoom in here. You know, it's pretty cool, so. Clean, you know. Um, obviously, you gotta maintenance it because uh, 
All right, so obviously this is cool. This definitely saves me time because before I had to like manually do all this shit and or, or I had to make like cuts, like pretty much where like the dialogue ends and where it begins, then I'll reduce it and then I'll just add a cross uh, a crossfade between like the reduced audio and the increased um, volume, right? However, as, as you zoom in here, as you can see, like the the increase of volume that happens after the end of the dialogue, and also the decrease of the music volume begins before the dialogue enters, right? So I don't like that because like uh, it's like there's a little moment of silence that you can hear like the music swell and decrease, you know. Um, obviously, yeah, I don't like that. I kind of like it to have more of a kind of like an overlap, right? So messing around with uh, this ducking feature, pretty much what I discovered is, well, one, uh, the phase is too much. I set that to 300. Uh, that's what I like personally. Uh, and the sensitivity is what kind of like helps to have more of, a, of an overlap or underlap or whatever you want to call it, right? So it, you're basically creating almost like a crossfade. So uh, what I do is I, I discovered that you turn down the sensitivity. So I'm going to generate keyframes. And you can see here the keyframe should move. Give it a moment. Boom, yeah, see, they already moved. So since it reduces sensitivity, you, you can see here like the keyframes of the increase and the, re, the decrease of the volume for the music. It kind of like is closer to like the ends of the dialogue. Um, obviously, you got a main. Yeah, so I prefer that a lot better than having like the audio increase way after the end of the dialogue and start to decrease uh, before the new dialogue appears. So it just like it's you get like this crossfade. So that's what works for me. You know? Um, obviously, yeah, it's just way better. Yeah, if you reduce the sensitivity too much, like in this case, just down to zero, as for example, uh, sake. As you can see here, like it doesn't even like uh, create keyframes. So. I guess like reduce the sensitivity until you're able to like uh, get the little crossfade that you want. And I guess in my case, uh, one works, which I'm surprised. I was having issues with this earlier. Anyways, um, yeah. So as you can see, I'm getting like the the crossfade that I like, or what I call a crossfade. Oh. Um, obviously, you got. Yeah, that's way better. So I did this by reducing the sensitivity of the ducking. Right now, if I zoom out. Because the sensitivity is so low, pretty much I'm starting to get like a bunch of random like uh, keys here. Because like throughout my, like the dialogue, obviously there's like moments where you know I, I pause or I take a moment to think of what I'm saying or whatnot. So what happens is you start getting like uh, it generates like a bunch of like uh, keyframes here. And that's it because uh, I don't know if you're able to see it with my shitty camera phone, but like the you know so obviously that doesn't work. So <laughs> my uh, work around this situation is I get my blade tool. See where the gap's at, and I already have those keyframes that I created that I'm happy with, right? Because it has like that, like crossfade um, sound to them. So I just make a cut here and here. So basically, this this music section it has a sensitivity of one. So what I do in this case, uh, since I have a gap here, I'm gonna make another cut as well, and I'm gonna make a cut here as well. In these areas where I don't want any of these like diffs with the audio, these uh, increase and decrease in volumes, I just increase the sensitivity all the way up. I generate the keyframes, and that should get rid of the keyframes. Oops, see the same thing up here. Increase it to 10, generate keyframes, gets rid of them. Same thing here. Get rid of them, generate keyframes. So, and back here too. Generate keyframes. And as you can see here, this one didn't seem to create any keyframes. So I had to increase the sensitivity down to, let's try, three. Yeah, that's another thing. It starts to do some weird shit, like, you know, it does these kinds of, like, dips. I don't know why. Let's try four. And there you go. See, it has that, uh, it created a keyframe before the end of this dialogue. Right here, same thing over here. It decreases the volume while the new dialogue and it begins, right? So... That's what I like. Or to take this key. This mouse would. Yeah, so I mean, uh, it may seem dumb because I mean, like, most people, they just want to, like, have, like, the whole main audio clip 
push one button and not do any other work, which is fine. I totally understand that. It's kind of like pointless, but um, I kind of making this video because, you know, I personally like this, um, this almost like this crossfade that's happening right now with the keyframes here and with the end of my, the end and the beginning of my dialogue audio, right? So, but when I was like having like the settings by default, I wasn't creating that too much, right? So um, I was kind of a, I like this feature, but at the moment, like I guess it still needs some work or some improvements, uh, you know, to be, more, I guess, customizable to my preference, you know? I just, you know, see, this guy's way too... We don't want the keyframes here. I'm going to increase the audio more, the sensitivity to three. Boom, there you go. So, yeah, I mean, I can, again, I understand. It's like, what's the point of, like, uh, using this feature if I'm still going to do this additional work, right? But the cool thing about this is that, say if I wanted to, like, uh, make any adjustments, I wanted to, like, you know, reduce this audio clip, so now what I do is just pretty much just move this guy back. You got to use the rolling edit tool, right, to scroll back. Let's try it three again. There you go. Yeah, I created some keyframes here, but I could just get rid of them with that. Boom. And, like, I have, like, my keyframes here pretty close to the way I like them, right? So, so anyways, yeah, I know, I mean, it's probably, like, uh, an additional work that I'd rather not do, right? But, I mean, I do like this feature. You know, it does make life a little bit easier, so... I just push a button and it just moves the keyframes for me. And yeah, it's it's fine for now, right? But like I said, like I just, uh, by the default features, I was like increasing and decreasing the volume way after the end of the dialogue and way before like the beginning of the new dialogue. And it's just that swell, I just don't like. Let me put it back to uh, six, but yeah. Courage. I'm actually t Yeah, that just sudden increase and decrease in volume I just don't like so that's why I kind of do it this way so by messing around with the sensitivity you know it's not perfect you know but I mean it's getting in there it's close enough so yeah I know it's kind of dumb but again it's just something that I it's just something I feel that needs to be improved on for uh, this uh, ducking feature. Or, like, again, um, if I'm doing something wrong, please let me know. I really would appreciate it, right? So, anyways, uh, that's all I got for this video. Thanks again. Bye.